Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge and it's another review day. The QSP Lark, as you saw on the thumbnail of course. I did review a QSP knife uh, recently, the uh, Folding Canary, and that was actually the last review I did. And this is a under three inch knife. This one's over three inches. I, I was going to do uh, the Vosteed uh, Mini Nightshade next, but I'll do the Nightshade after the Lark video. It's also an under three inch knife and I I guess I just decided not to do un two under three inch knives in a row. Uh, we'll do the Lark instead. Uh, this knife is available I think five different ways if I remember correctly. Three versions or three colors of G10, uh, green, a black, and this sort of green, uh, blue gray color. And two versions of shredded carbon fiber, a red and a blue shredded carbon fiber, for only like $7 US more than the G10 version. And uh, when I ordered these, uh, the shredded ones weren't available, so I got me this G10 one. And uh, yeah, we're gonna review this knife right now. As you can clearly see, I've got the uh, blue gray model. Um, We've got a very slight drop point on this blade and a fairly straight handle. So it's a very simple design in terms of, you know, when it's deployed, what it looks like. It's a decent knife. Well, there are some little bit unique things about it. We've got a satin finish on here, 14C28 and stainless steel with no billboarding all over this knife. The biggest thing you've got is on the pivot pin here is the QSP. And the 14C28N is right there. But notice the horizontal sand lines. QSP does this every once in a while. And I really like that for a satin finish because it's a little bit different. Now, I prefer a stone wash finish, but this satin finish is quite nice indeed. And uh, you've also got, if you're looking on the show side here, a spacer here for the pocket clip on the side that you're not using it. And I don't know if they did this intentionally. I'm, I'm suspecting that they did. It also has horizontal sand lines in it. So it sort of mimics the blade. I really like that. They could have just done a polished stainless steel right there, uh, as they did right here on the canary, just polished stainless steel. But this has got the horizontal sand lines and just a little touch, just a little thing that looks really, really well done. Back to the blade here, we've got jimping on the spine. Of course, I'd like longer set of jimping, but it does okay. We've got a, not enough of a sharpness tile, to be honest with you. We've got a plunge here that happens sort of gradually, it sort of just sort of fans down, and it ends before, the sharpness tile ends before the plunge gets to the standard depth on the main bevel. So that sharpness tile I would like it to be bigger. Or if they would have done an abrupt plunge, you know, then the sharpness soil wouldn't need to be bigger. So that, yeah, when I go to sharpen the knife for the first time, I know I'm going to end up, you know, grinding in a little bit of a shoulder on the edge if I want to sharpen it right to the end. The sharpness trial does not go very deep into the steel this way either, the way I'm pointing. So it won't take too many times of sharpening this knife before that start part of the knife blade starts not looking the greatest. Functionally, it'll still be just fine, but it'll start looking a little bit messy right in there. But that's a good looking blade. I'll talk about the specs of the thickness of the edge and all that stuff and the grind angles a little bit later when I do all the measurements. Uh, how about the action and lockup and such? It's a liner lock knife and lockup very well done. I'm looking right in that area there. There's a lot of room for it to wear over in time, but it's a solid lockup. No blade place side to side, up and down. Uh, easy to get at that lock release. You can see it's exposed right there. Very easy to get in there. Push it over with your thumb. Start closing the knife. That works really well. Uh, when the knife is closed, the alignment's really well done. So that's all good stuff. Yes, yes, you want to know about deploying the blade. We've got a, I don't know, what do they call this? I'm going to call it a dual flipper. There's the traditional flipper, not quite traditional flipper. It doesn't, uh, the flipper arm doesn't stick out in that you grab it and flip it. 
it just is exposed a little bit right there at the front. Let's get a focus here right there. Just a little bit exposed, you can grab it and deploy the blade. Or you can use your thumb and do the pull over, pulling your thumb over to deploy the blade. So two ways of using a flipper without having you know, a flipper sticking out. Now what you also don't get then is a guard down here. So they've milled this back a little bit, especially with your index finger. You know, so this area here, especially with the little jipping from the spine flipper, the back flipper, it does offer a tiny bit of a guard right there. So that's not bad at all. I kind of like that. Feels good in the hand. And with this setup here where the steel of the blade matches the G10, it's another spot to put your fingers sort of like a forward choil. So you can choke up on it and you don't have jipping for your thumb here, but you can choke up and have a secure grip and do cutting that way as well. Or you can keep your hand back here and get more reach. Quite happy with that. Uh, I haven't talked about the taper on lint knives for a while. The distal taper on this doesn't start until about here. So it's just a, it's not really a distal taper. It's just a taper towards the tip of the blade and uh, you know, getting thinner there. It's a good knife for piercing. The design's not bad. It's not excellent for piercing because uh, you don't have a lot of a guard here, but it's a decent blade shape for that. Slicing, cutting, it's a really good blade shape for that. And uh, we'll talk about the sharpness when I do the measurements later on. We've got flat slab G10. We've got rounded, not just chamfered, but rounded, you know, bull nosing all the way around. We've got inset liners and the grip feels comfortable. It's not bad at all. Uh, the pocket clip feels fine, even though it's got the upswept end typical of QSP knives. Don't mind that. We've got a uh, lanyard hole back here. It's lightly chamfered, sort of a bull nose instead of a chamfering just in there as well. 550 paracord fits through there, no problem. Open spacer, open pillar construction, I should say. Sort of hourglass shaped uh, spacers back there. Well done. We've got some skeletonizing in there. I'm not sure if I can, you can just barely see a hole there, a hole there, another hole there. I'll take it apart and show you that a little bit later on as well. And that's the basic construction. How about this uh, pocket clip? How well does it work? Well, let me pull out my uh, pants substitute. Well, actually they're real pants that I don't wear anymore because I cut them up and stapled them onto a two by four or a two by eight, whatever it was. Anyhow, it doesn't matter what piece of wood it was. Works well. Fits in there, looks good. This gray blue is sort of a denim-y kind of color. It's not too far off. So sits in there, looks good, works well. We've got T6 screws on the body of this knife. And when we take it apart, you'll see that these two screws alone, wait a minute, that back, that doesn't match up. There's gonna be more screws to take it apart. Uh, this is a T8 here, and uh, let's take a look at that. Pretty good, not bad. And, oh, I left my T6 upstairs. Do I have another T6 here? Uh, that's a T8 as well for my little flag screwdrivers. So I'll be right back. I gotta go upstairs and get the T6 driver. Here's my T6 driver. Right there, did it focus? Yeah. And let's take a look at these. The play is very nice, not, not loose at all. So fairly snug. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, there you go. That's how it's constructed. A balance point is a little further back in the handle than I prefer. I'd like the balance point to be right up here. Uh, you know, right where your index finger fully grips, you know, even up here, it's a little bit better. Maybe they could have done more skeletonizing. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I think that's about everything that I wanted to uh, say at this point in the video. Uh, let's do a little bit of a teardown. Okay, I've taken off the pivot screw, which is a well done screw. There's no uh, thread locker on there. There's two screws here from the uh, pocket clip. And they are two different lengths. Hopefully, uh, all, you can see the close-up. The longer one goes in the back space here because it goes right into the uh, back spacer for it to come apart. 
as you can see that's a little bit different right there then we've got another screw right there so that's another t6 and uh, it's a button screw and it's very snug snugger than any of the other ones uh, and uh, let's yeah there we go now it's coming loose and take that out put that down and now we can see uh, we've got a captured stop pin and it's inside it's it's not open front I really don't like captured stop pins when it's open front so that's done really really well got a d-shaped pin here and let me get rid of the tension by closing the blade and then this is going to come loose so there you go one hole for skeletonizing here and four holes for skeletonizing back here and we've got very tiny ceramic ball bearings I have mixed feelings about this it's a uh, less surface area but there's only what three six seven eight ball bearings in there I'd prefer a little bit more uh, uh, you know if it had the ball bearings that the uh, mini can uh, mini the folding canary has I'd prefer that over these um, I just don't like the little ball bearings I think they could have made it bigger uh, as you can see the ball bearings are in there there is still some more shoulder uh, where my thumbnail is going over right now so that it could they could have I think they could have put bigger ball bearings in there and I wish that they would have now this isn't a deal breaker for me the action on this thing's pretty good I just wish they would have put in uh, something a little bit different and if this these holes if they would be a little bit bigger not sure if you can make them that much bigger but, well they could have I guess a little bit bigger that would have been preferred to for the balance point but it's not bad here's your pivot pin it's a d-shaped pin to work well in that d-shaped hole there and uh, that's about it that's very simply made no big problems uh, just a little change with the ball bearings is what I would prefer well it finally happened when I was putting this together it doesn't happen very often on QSP knives at all and I've reviewed loads of them uh, this screw right here this little guy that's the short one you put the long one in the back and the short one in the front uh, both of these short ones seem to be a little softer than they should be and uh, I mostly stripped out this one and I partly stripped out this one now they don't go in very tight at all anyways they're just going into the liner uh, this is the structural one with the uh, open pillar construction here that's why I don't like t6 screws I really dislike t6 screws because they tend to strip out too easily but it works good uh, I think I showed the alignment before really nice flippers even better now you know I I did lube it up with some really nice lubrication and uh, works quite well indeed I'm quite happy with that so time now for all the measurements first the weight of this knife 90 grams 3.17 ounces pretty good the factory sharpness 195 bess not bad at all so that's pretty good the cutting edge length 81.1 millimeters 3.193 inches blade length tipped to the closest spot on the g10 is just a tiny bit more 81.2 millimeters 3.197 inches and the blade thickness up here at the ricasso where the flat is because it's a full flat grind so you measure it back here 2.95 millimeters 0.116 of an inch so just a little bit under an eighth of an inch blade depth it's biggest here at the heel of the blade 21.8 millimeters 0.858 of an inch the thickness of the edge behind the grind so on the main bevel just before the edge bevel 0.46 millimeters 18 thousandths of an inch thin very good I like that the grind angles this side's got an average grind angle along the length of 19.6 degrees 18.6 to 20.6 so two degrees of change along the length except for right here at the heel uh, they must have done a pass or something on that last little bit little over you know three or four millimeters where it's a lot worse but 
that's not hard to sharpen out and fix. This side's got an average grind angle of 20 degrees. It's only a slight bit different here on the belly, hardly noticeable. Very well sharpened consistency, decent angle. I'd sharpen this thing to 18 degrees per side though. Uh, for a pocket knife with this steel, most pocket knives I go for 18 degrees per side. That's just my personal preference. The uh, handle length now, so the length of the G10, not the uh, pocket clip sticking out a little bit. The G10 edges, 107.9 millimeters, four and a quarter inches, almost exactly. The grip area, and I'm measuring from where, roughly where my thumbnails are right now, that's about nine and a half centimeters or three and three quarter inches, so a good full size knife. Uh, my hands are barely extra large and I easily get a four finger grip on this. Uh, the thickness of the handle scales, the flat slab G10, not on the hardware, 11.4 millimeters, 0.449 of an inch, so a little under half an inch is good. The uh, handle depth within the grip area, so I'm not counting up here right now, I'm counting right here, that's the widest spot in the main grip area, 22.5 millimeters, 0.886 of an inch, and when the knife is closed, the widest spot is right up here. 25.8 millimeters, 1.02 inches. So one inch or less doesn't take up a lot of space in the pocket. And the total length of this thing is roughly 189 millimeters, 7.44 inches. Quite good. Like I said, I was going to talk about the price next. Uh, $57.80 US in American stores at White Mountain Knives. You can save 2% with 10%. 10% at White Mountain Knives with coupon code CCE. That makes it $52.02 and you get free shipping in the United States from White Mountain Knives. If you want the carbon fiber, it's $64.99, take off 10%, $58.49. So under 60 bucks for the shredded carbon fiber version of this knife. In Canada, you're paying just a two or three, four percent more than what the basic exchange rate is on the day I'm recording this, where it's like a buck 35 Canadian for each buck American, roughly. Uh, so 78.99 to 89.99 Canadian. Not bad for what you get. Could it be better? Yes, it could. Every knife could be better, but it's a pretty decent knife. I'm quite happy with the shape. It feels good in the hand. I like the blade design. It's nothing extravagant. It doesn't grab your attention. It doesn't scream at you. It's just a simple, nicely made knife for the most part. Love those horizontal lines reflected on both ends. I really like that they put a spacer over here. Well done. I'm happy with this knife overall. Do you have one? What do you think of it? Are you going to get one? Which one would you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you to my supporters. I've had a couple new supporters. I'll post the list right here. And uh, thank you so much for choosing to help out my channel. And I still haven't heard back from John. John B. from Texas. Hopefully you saw my email. I'll try emailing you again. Uh, maybe it ended up in a spam folder. I don't know. But John, you won a knife from my giveaway, my monthly giveaway. So uh, contact me, John, at jake at and uh, I will let you know what knives you can choose from to win. There you go. The Lark. Thank you so much for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.